Okay, quick Thursday morning radar update. So, little gap, well, a little move up in the DAX today, a little gap down in the UK. On the uh, the risk markets, the 250 and the small caps, pretty normal action. We've had a pretty nice run there. Portfolio blasting through all-time highs again today. Uh, I think uh, our VLX is still doing good, isn't it? Ergo's broken out a few days ago, and today uh, we've got idea, clean break on idea today, so fantastic action. Some really good winners at the moment. I will quickly have a look. I'm expecting it to be a little bit uh, slow in the in the in the volume leaders today. It's 10:30. We should have traded 29 percent. I'm just going to fly through these, and uh, not much uh, moving in the large caps today. VLX, KWS. Obviously, I'm. Uh, Mentioning ones we've uh, talked about in the past many times. And I will just jump into the small caps, 29%. And then I will uh, move into something a little bit different, just to uh, 29%. Yeah, it's a pretty slow day in the small caps as well. MCL. Trying to tick up there. It's kind of a lower high in the numbers, but a tick back up from the, uh, the horrible uh, tick down last year. MPAC through highs again there. Just put through these. Zephyr. I just put the log scale on. I didn't realise I didn't, didn't have it on. Now I traded this move. I traded from here and and I sold into this little sp spike here. Um, I'm going to go off a little bit off piece as well on that. It started hitting the screens again for me. You know, in interesting areas. Here be here being one what I look at, and obviously here as well. So I had the chance to buy this back for another, you know, run. But I didn't, you know, I put money into, into better growth. But it was a huge winner for me. The money what was compounded has, has been compounding again in other stocks doing, doing similar action is, you know, the reality of uh, compounding gains. So in this area, we call them POS or CTPs, calculated total punts. You know, you're gonna get the ones what keep going You've got to make decisions on how to manage these, and I manage them different. I don't, I don't hang on for dear life. You know, I do de-risk these into into what we call the the moon zone. <laughs> so, I will just do a little sidestep over to bid stack. Just note noted this one's come out with news today. Now. We covered this one at trading basis back in this area here. And uh, talked about it in all the videos. On this day here, this, and it's not about picking tops, you know, th this is more about how to sell a POS stock. And, and you know, you call someone's pet stock a POS, uh, they get very upset with you. But, you know, I've been sat in the seat a long time. Um, you know, uh, as Dave Landry would say, these sardines are meant for trading, not for eating. <laughs> so, and I think he took it from someone else, didn't he? Obviously, but, uh, you know, low risk entries, getting positioned for the move. And these things, you know, Predominantly, I like to trade to the, towards the best growth in the market. Uh, you know, some some stocks trade towards hopes and dreams, you know. And, and this one traded towards hopes and dreams. And, you know, 
let's just cover the moon zone again. I'll bring the the squeeze chart up so you can sort of have a have a good look. You'll you'll see my actual. Uh, oh, probably I'm sure the videos are still still in YouTube, but I don't know if I dropped them in the website or in YouTube. But um, a spike above today's move is moon zone, and this is basically a really simple thing you know i can throw it out to anyone who does trade these pos stocks this is what, what when you see your pnl on this day you think it's going to a far off distant universe it's already at the moon but you think hang on a minute i'm at the moon fantastic i'm going to hitch a ride to um you know the other end of the milky way and the reality is when you're at the moon over the next 50 times you take this sort of you, you know you're in this position you know just leaving some shares at the moon is the right thing to do and a very simple way of doing it closes outside my squeeze chart that's that's my opinion you know there de-risk some at least and on the other side of that if it does go on on a big spike you know you can always trail a one day low and that's what i do i tend to sell some and trail a one day low i commit to giving back that much and i make sure you know my average price is basically you know the one well the one day low was there on this day here it moves to there and i'm committing to giving back so my average price is be somewhere in the middle there and uh, I could have sold a few on the way up here, maybe sold a quarter or a third on the way up as well. But it's the complete opposite to riding a trend. You know, don't get sucked in. I'll tell you what, I, I, I can remember being sat in stocks, what were in the moon zone, and I know the feeling that you think they're going to a distant moon. I've never seen one go to a distant moon yet. I've seen one make another, a diff distant universe. I've seen, one, seen them make you know new spikes higher but just don't get caught in that that sort of hype um i'll say it again if you follow stock tips you know i'll, I'll reverse that anyone can get a little bit of methodology down and you know get better results than following stock tips you know throwing darts in into into a board basically is you know and it doesn't matter who's people are paid to churn out stock tips. Do you think they trade the market profitably? No, or else they'd be trading the market. They wouldn't be, you know, paid journalism. So, you know, anyone who gets a little bit of math, dead simple math, behind making money in the POS zone as well, you know, that will help you. Low risk entries. I'll tell you now, I don't buy anything what's falling. Low risk entries in rising stocks. Over my time, you see it's rising over my time frame before I even start looking at these things. And uh, I'll just, just say I didn't take this one, but many did. So back into the volume leaders. And then I'll do another little bit on... Uh, Let me just buzz through these fast again. I'll do another little talk on. Basically, market crash moth to the fame, flame, moth to the flame, you know, investing activity. And um, here you go again. You know, you'll see it over and over again. You can see, see the areas where I, I'm going to show an interest. And... Uh, they're going to be the low risk areas, these little bases, you know, the, the trend is, is up on the lowest time frame I follow for that. And it makes this spiking move into, oh, lo and behold, you know. So there you go. Study. Three little tidbits there. Mark calling Gorson. <laughs> yeah, let's see how turning up again there so the next thing is is the invest you know after the market crash i'll just you know i i run a trend model and I, you know i know exactly what the market's doing in the background uh you know 
where I should be putting my money, what sectors are moving, blah, blah, blah. I'll just go into the, the 350 bear sectors and I've ordered it by sector so I can see um, the bearish sectors in the UK 350 and I can tell you that lo and behold travel and leisure has the biggest weighting in the bearish sectors so you know the moth to the flame something what's beat up the most the old falling knife sort of methodology that people think it's going to make them the most money um, one thing it will do is it will make your account the most volatile you've ever seen it by getting involved in the most volatile beaten up sector and many people were buying into these so so you know falling knives you know where was the first falling knife probably here and then here and then here and you know losing 80 percent of your your positions on stuff like that and then the average price you've got over a few buys it is still kind of break even and you've lost over a year of bull market it's kind of it's you know it's where a lot of people get tripped up you know these are avoid areas and uh scene world was another one you know where is it? It's done nothing. It's gone sideways in horrible volatile action. Look at these things. I should put the weekly up, shouldn't I? So you can just see. I'll just go through them again on the weekly. And and this is where you don't want your money. In fact, seen well broke trends. So, you know, so far higher. Obviously, the market class crashes this line here, but it's dead money. And imagine weighting yourself in this sector, thinking it's the best sector to be in. And obviously, you know, the most beaten up does not make the, the best opportunity going forward. And just compare this with any kind of stocks, what we're refusing to go down and go and have a look at those charts. And... Um, you know, polar opposites. So, you know, how to sell a POS and a moth to the flame investing <laughs> methodologies. You know, we're, we're over a year into this bull market. Fantastic market. Imagine being stuck in those POS as what were at the moon or even buying at the moon, you know, and uh, and Im imagine watching your portfolio going sideways in volatile swings while there's so many good growth stocks just trending higher, you know, okay.